Hey guys, happy Sunday morning. Welcome back. I've got some of your comments from yesterday's 1017 video, and I just wanted to go through that with you. You guys left some very good comments. So Larry Scaglione says, God gave me a personal sign that he established with me in the past during a traumatic situation. Following that, uh, God revealed to Larry that both Jeff and his friend Ron are right about the date of the Dinar revaluation. Today, God told Larry that he is making it obvious to anyone who is paying attention we should all thank God in advance for the blessing he is about to bestow on each of us. May God continue to bless us all who he has chosen to receive this blessing. Larry, thank you for sharing that. Kimmy Fiore, she says, Hallelujah. She was praying that God would give her confirmation of the date, and last night he did. He is worthy to be praised. So, Kimmy, thank you for sharing that. She got her own individual confirmation of the date. Larry Kelly, Larry Kelly wrote a very nice memories and stuff that he's been reminiscing about with his dad after his dad's passing. So, so Larry, Larry went through a bunch of stuff and then, um, let me just get to the second half of it, guys. I mean, you can go back to yesterday's 1017 if you want to read his full, um, his full story, but let's just look at kind of the second half of it. Here's, here's a very key point that what Larry's trying to share with us. It's in the middle. It says, Jeff, what I haven't told you and your subscribers is, is at this point is whenever my father would share his stories, he always would first start with that he was living at 1017 McMillan or he would say he was at when he was at 1017. That was his, his father's address where he grew up when he was a child. And then he would always start his stories with a particular introduction and at times would begin telling one of the stories and he would say, I knew when you were at 1017. So he says, when I asked the Lord in that field, how could I know if my father received my message? And I recall noticeably loud silence when suddenly I heard an audible voice, a soft voice sounding like many waters with resounding power and profound love say to me, what time is it? As you can imagine, I was surprised and quite frightened as I slowly looked around. I heard the voice again ask at the same time what time is it i retrieved my cell phone from out of my pocket then looked at the time it was exactly 10 17 a.m as i heard myself say out loud it's 10 17 i fell to my knees in utter awe with tears streaming down my cheeks thanking him and praising him for acknowledging and answering my prayer and request i don't recall how long i was on my knees but it was many minutes that there was that was a moment in my life that I will never forget, the Lord is real, Jeff. He truly is real, and He hears us, especially when He prompts us to pray and commune with Him. And then Larry ends it by saying, I've been working out of town recently. I was unable to watch your most recent videos. I'm now back in town, catching up on some of the videos. While reading comments on 10.6, Trump 17, there was a particular subscriber, Synonitis, PG3D that confirmed 1017 Burr. There was a short comment triggered my memories of my father's stories and how the Lord blessed me on that fateful day with what I thought was an unanswerable question. You see, my father lived in Winnipeg, Canada in his youth, and at the times he would share his stories at the dinner table. He would use them, he would use the term Burr often during one of his frigid tales because of the tremendous cold he had to endure during the winter months growing up in Canada. Larry, thank you for sharing that with us, buddy. That was an awesome story. All right, guys, the central bank launches the electronic platform for letters of guarantee. So within the framework of its reform measures in keeping developments in the automation of the banking industry, the banking announces the launch of electronic platform for letters of guarantee in which the information of letters will be recorded by authorized banks. Access to it and with different and specific powers provided by the bank is responsible for the, the accuracy and correctness of such data. The beneficiaries of the two sectors, public and private, and after issuing the letter are required to adopt an electronic registration form obtained from the central bank in which this platform will issue, including information on these letters, has various security marks such as a such as a heat stamp barcode feature, with this bank incurring any financial commitment that results for the bank's delay in paying the value of the letter, 
The bank invites the parties benefiting from the letters of guarantee and located inside the capital of Baghdad to obtain the information. Registration form by this bank and the authorities outside the capital of Baghdad can obtain information registration form from the branches of the central bank and according to the geographical area of each branch. Look at the green highlight, guys. The above, the above mechanism will be actually implemented starting from the 18th of October 20th. So again, they're going to implement these steps with the central bank and these letters of guarantee guys starting October 18th. Parliamentary finance excludes raising the price of the dollar against the dinar to compensate the decline. So guys, the title on this is not is not accurate to what they're telling you. So, let's let's look at this. Basically here guys they're just saying that they're going to um that they're that they rule out look at let's look at the very last sentence Cougar rules out that the government of the central bank in 2021 will choose to raise the exchange rate of the dollar against the dinar so that's all it is it's not a they're just saying they rule out increasing the value of the the exchange rate of the dollar against the dinar in that article it's not it's not a real important article to us at this time Council of Ministers send a bill to finance the fiscal deficit to the Iraqi Parliament. So what the Council of Ministers done is they've drafted another bill to try to resolve and work on the deficit. On this one, they're going to try to finance the deficit and submit it to Parliament for approval. So that's about all that is. We don't need to read the entire. It's a short article anyway. Nuri al-Maliki was infected with the coronavirus. Wouldn't that be nice if that man met his maker? He has done Iraq so wrong on many levels. He needs to, but on the other side of it, he's more like a cat where he has nine lives. They, they cannot get rid of this guy. He's like a leech. A member of the Democratic, the Sinjar Agreement is a gateway to the implementation of Article 140 and will extend to other cities. So, let's talk about this for a second. Um, what we're not going to read this whole article guys it's kind of lengthy but i mean you guys can find these and read them yourself i'll give you the quick summary of it so what article 140 is this or article 140 is is compensation for the kurdish citizens from what saddam, from what saddam hussein did to them he did them wrong he stole things from them he he took their land he took their property he took their money so he did them wrong so what article 140 is now i want to show you something here um Article 140, guys, cannot be... See how it says Article 140 of the Constitution? Today, Iraq's current Constitution only goes up to Article 139. Okay? They cannot... They cannot implement this until they amend the Constitution and add Article 140 to it. Okay? It also, because it has to do with money, it's a post-rate change item. Okay? The Article 140, guys, has actually been on the books and ready to implement since 2005. It's been waiting on the rate change this entire time. Okay, on the currency's got to go international. That's what it's about. But again, it has to do with, in a way, reparations or kind of in a way, paying back the Kurdish citizens from what Saddam Hussein did to them for their damages and their losses. Okay. They have a new salary scale, suspicion of appointments and the application of income tax, and economists leaks out the terms of the white paper. An economist expert professor, the some of the items of the white paper that the government intends to present to Parliament in order to reform the Iraq economy after the collapse of oil prices. Published articles of the paper, he said he kept a copy of it, reiterating that it came in accordance with the expectations regarding the fact that it will not depart from the framework of the International Monetary Fund's policy austerity measures with high social costs. He continued, This can be seen by looking at some of what was mentioned in the reform paper that the government called the white paper. The items of the white paper include reducing wages and salaries, okay, the reforming the retirement fund that so that it is not linked to the budget. The paper also included restructuring public salary scale by stopping new recruitment and replacing processes in the public sector. He pointed out the paper will review the fuel subsidies for state-owned oil companies and the proceeds of the sale of black oil must return to the 
the state treasury. The economist added, let's look at the red, the red portion. The paper will study the current exchange rate of the dollar against the dinar, taking into account the requirements of financial monetary stability, achieving the competitiveness of the Iraqi dinar, restructuring the state-owned public companies, and converting them into private companies. He said, it will include fixing the deficit in the ration card system in a way that secures protection of low-income people and withholding it from families whose income exceeds a certain ceiling and ensuring that all workers in the public, public and private mixed and cooperative sector are covered with retirement benefits, complete the social insurance law in order to be an alternative to the unified state pension law, re, retirement and social security for workers. Parliamentary Finance and the Central Bank Governor discussed the White Paper and Foreign Reserves. The Parliamentary Finance Committee held a meeting with the Governor of the Central Bank, Mustafa Gelem, at the Committee's headquarters in Parliament. Committee reporter, the Committee hosted that the, today that the Government of the Bank to discuss the Bank's position on foreign currency cash and reserves in addition to the White Paper, noting that the Ministry of Finance presented the Financial Living Committee law for the remaining months. The Minister of Finance, Alawi, announced during the meeting that the Ministry will present the White Paper for Economic Reform to the Cabinet next Tuesday. He added that the paper includes a diagnosis of the origin of economic problems and remedies that it will be difficult, but there is no alternative to, to them, announcing that the central bank's foreign currency reserves amount to $52 billion and Iraq will be in danger if it falls to $20 billion. So I want to stress something to you guys here. They're telling you that they're submitting the white paper reforms to the cabinet. Okay? Guys, the cabinet is the council of ministers. They're the ones that actually make laws. Okay? And, and create the laws. Not approve them. They create them. So right here they're telling you that the reforms have not even been drafted or created at this time that they still have to create them okay so i just just want to raise that to you so anyway guys there you go there's there's today's news god bless you guys have a great day